Well, hey everybody, Lisa Tamati here from Pushing the Limits. Today I'm super excited. I've got my friend Greg McPherson with me and you are going to love this guy. This is going to be a fantastic interview. Greg, welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you. Lisa, it's great to be here. Great to see your face. <laughs> now, um, Greg and I happened to meet at the Natural Health Summit um, a couple of months ago, uh, both speaking at that wonderful event. Um, and you were speaking just before me, and I, you know, I have to say, I was just so engrossed in your presentation um, that it was hard to concentrate on my speech afterwards. <laughs> um, you've written a book uh, called "The Nine: uh, Harnessing the Nine Hallmarks of Aging," and you're a biotechnologist and a pharmacist, uh, also the founder of SRW uh, Labs, and. Uh, a supplement range that is just really, really next level. Um, Greg, I, I want to let you come to work and just tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get here? How did you get to where you are now? Yeah, absolutely, Lisa. Um, so I, I'm a, a pharmacist of uh, 30 years now, so it's, it's amazing how quickly all that happens. Um, and I got into business pretty early, so I think it was around about 25 when I started um, a pharmacy, and that was focusing on rest homes and hospitals. So this was looking at how do we help people towards the end of their lives and support them with the, like the best medication and, and so on. And it, you, you do this, uh, and I did it for, uh, I guess, 15 years, and you start to just wonder, is there a better way? Like there is just, you know, a lot of people in in hospital um, and, and, and also in the process, my father passed away at a quite an early age, sort of early 50s. And so you not only connect from an emotional um, level as to like, you know, but just ask the question, how do we do this? How do we age a little better? And then I was fortunate enough to um, get involved in a biotech company, um, involved in looking after mitochondria, which are the tiny batteries in your cells. And did that for around eight years um, and then stepped back three years ago and just had a look at, uh, I guess, looked up really and said, okay, um, you know, if you went off and took your car for a service, you'd be a bit disappointed if it was just the engine that the guys looked at, right? So you <laughs> really need everything to be looked at. So that's really where the book came from um, in terms of starting to look and investigate how we can treat the whole cell and help it stay young. And then that's also led into SRW Laboratories where we're really you know, curating this information and just making it very simple for people to take supplements that um, that, that work in this area. And it's an incredibly exciting time. We're starting to really understand aging at a cellular level. Um, and that just puts so much, uh, so many tools in our pockets it's in, and so many um, um, yeah, things that we can do, not just supplements, but just generally things in life that can slow aging down. And what's super exciting, of course, is we can measure it all now. So we can actually look inside the cells and see how well they're traveling. Yeah, we can look at sort of the biological and the versus the chronological age. Uh, and you, you and I are in our 50s and uh, we can do a test. There's one that you have called Do Not Age uh, or D DNA, DNA, DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you can actually have a look at some of the methylation markers and see where you are from a biological perspective. Have I butchered that explanation of it? But... No, you nailed it. Absolutely. I mean, it's just <laughs> really interesting. It, it turns out we've actually got literally clocks on our on our DNA these are little um like it's almost like you know uh, a, a snowball as we age we accumulate little methylation patterns and these are little pa uh, methylation methyl groups are what the DNA uses to turn off and on genes and so on but we we actually develop a, a very clear pattern on our DNA as we age and it's measurable and it's they've, they've done all the tests and they've compared it with lots of people and um, and they've got a number of age clocks now, which um, essentially allow us to look in and see how well we're doing from an aging perspective. And it's really interesting because it's a it's a plastic number. It, it's variable. So someone who sits on the couch, enjoys a pint and a few pies and doesn't move around a lot has actually got will, will likely have a methylation clock, which is actually accelerating. It's actually uh, speeding um speeding you up, but whereas if you jump off the couch and do a bit of exercise, then you actually can actually slow that aging clock down. And, and there are a number of uh, things we can do, which we can talk about a little bit later. Um, but what that means really is, is that we actually are absolutely in control of our destiny in terms of how well we age and how healthily we age. And uh, the sooner we can address that and understand what to do, uh, that these things will compound over our life to actually mean that we get um, to be at old age and, and good health. 
Um, and that's, uh, I think that's really exciting, that insight. It's, it's amazing. Like I've got it, one of my clients actually has done one at your age uh, tests and, uh, <clears throat> and and it's showing too because he's done it a couple of times uh, and, and there, are, there are a number of different epigenetic aging clocks and with, that they can use and, you know, there's still lots of research to be done in this area, but it gives them a marker, for example, that he's aging in his case 0.8 of a year for every year that he's living. Uh, that means that the stuff he's doing is is working. And so he's going to double down, isn't he? Because he's motivated to see that improvement. And he's in his 60s and he's going backwards now. So some of the things, of course, that you did when you were younger, you know, have caused damage. Goodness knows I've done some damage to my body. Um, but I, it, it's not a fixed thing. You said it was plastic. And so this is this means that we can actually start to turn the clock back and we can slow it down. And, and the, the technology and the information and the research uh, that's coming down the pipeline is what really excites me. Because what we have at the moment is, is great and we're able to slow things down. We're starting to understand all those nine hallmarks of aging, which we'll get into. Uh, but what's coming in 10 years time, Greg, that's where you and I know, like if we can keep our shit together now, so to speak, in 10 years time, we'll be able to go perhaps get a pill or an injection uh, and actually stop aging for the next 20 years and then go back and repeat, rinse and repeat. And this sounds like science fiction to the average person. But when you start to understand the space, that gets pretty bloody exciting, really. Yeah, it's it's so exciting. It's literally we'll go to the car wash and it'll wash 10 years off our, our cellular age, if you will, biological age. And then we yeah, get to 50, go to 40, rinse and repeat. And we, we, we know that there are animals out there that get to 200 um, and tortoises, whales. There are even um, I think jellyfish, which are almost immortal. So there's no reason that we actually have to get to what we've got a hard cap. And so yeah, this, this is how we do it, essentially. And, and you know, this... It, it essentially is telling us that aging is programmed, right? Yeah. That biology and evolution has set us up that it's useful to get rid of the old and, and make way for the new. And this means that we adapt to our environment faster. And we, and, and, but I think uh, that we're going to get to a point now where that actually doesn't serve us and we'll have the tools to actually change that. So it is going to be a, a very wild and interesting, interesting future and something for the philosophers to sit down and, and, and chew over yes. for a short time as to exactly what this is going to look like. Yeah, and, you know, like some people say to me, well, isn't that being unfair on the next generation and stuff? But there is so much more compl um, complexity to that discussion, and that's, you know, a discussion for another day, the, the morals of such things. But I, I see it like this. Like, I'm in my 50s. It's taken me a long time to get educated, hopefully be wise, be capable. If I start to decline now, what a waste of all that education and experience to get me to this point, right? Where I could serve uh, humanity for the next 50, mm. 60, 70 years and actually share that wisdom. And then if we're all doing this collectively, we're not aging and taxing the system, the medical systems as much until the very end where we hopefully just fall off a cliff and die. You know, we don't have this long drawn out decline, which is what we typically see now, then that's going to be a benefit to society as well. And then on the other side, when we have these people with incredible expertise living longer, having more you know, longer professional lives, we're going to be able to solve some of the bigger problems that is face that are facing society as far as, you know, overpopulation and all of these sorts of things and the use of resources and blah, blah, blah. Um, so it, it's it's a more nuanced discussion than, oh, you're taking up resources for too long. Um, <clears throat> and I certainly want to live a long and healthy life. And I've also seen, you know, like you, I've, I've, I've lost my dad and I've uh, had my mum in, you know, uh, various states of disabledness for, for eight years now. Um, <clears throat> it's not what I want for my loved ones. I don't want to see people go through this horrible process and you would have seen it in the rest homes. If we can get people living healthy for longer, this is health span, not just lifespan, but health span. And then we suddenly die. We sit down after coming out of the garden one day and just sit down on a chair and pass away. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we, 
you know, we, we spend time mastering what we love, what we enjoy. I mean, being a human is so much around the people that we love and, and spending time with them. And and you're robbed when you lose someone that, that before their time, right? So if we can get to old age with good management rather than good luck, and we do it um, in a way that we thrive, then let's that's, that's, that's just run towards that goal. And right now, the, 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 there are some really interesting changes, like we, people talk about the population absolutely getting too high, but it's actually not. It's actually starting to hit down mm-hmm. the, other, the other line. And yeah. so this technology is going to turn up roughly around about the right time. Um, and also, you know, 17% of the US GDP goes towards healthcare right now. Yeah. And uh, by the, I think by 2050, uh, t- 2 billion people around the world are going to be over, over the age of 60. Wow. So, so what we've got there is a bit of a problem because the current healthcare system is not going to be able to afford that 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 issue that that, that particular I guess time bomb demographic yeah yeah so um, what we really need to do is shift to a preventative wellness right so you take your car in every six months because it's very dangerous if something goes wrong and it's expensive if it does as well we need to treat our bodies like that as well and spend you know, you know going for an hour or whatever it is it takes every six months get a check up check out what's going on and get ahead of the problem and start to invest in the technologies that we've got right now which are actually going to keep those cells and yourself you know younger and healthier for longer yeah this is my dream is to one day have a sort of a warrant of fitness place where you have all these expert doctors and and uh you know technologies and, and we can scan and we can test and we can do everything within a couple of hours and you come out the other side just like you go to the vtnz to get your warrant of fitness basically and you come out and and it's not a scary thing because you're 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 picking things up at the very early level i've done a lot of research this year on cancer and some of the tests that they're coming out now with a simple blood test where they're able to pick up the very early change that means that we don't have to get to the stage where we've actually got the full-blown tumors and metastasis everywhere and you know we're, we're, we're trying to clean up something that's that's massive we're, we're starting 10 years earlier and we're being in that preventative space and that's you know we're, we're, and the, the other thing that drives me mad with the the current medical system is there is not there is no talk about prevention there is always and, and when I send my clients to go and get even the basic blood test done there's often a pushback what do you want that for Hmm. and it's like (laughs) or uh people taking their blood sugar monitors or keto monitors and that you go go to the pharmacy and they go why do you want a blood sugar monitor you're not diabetic Hmm. you're going yeah that's the point (laughs) I want to make sure I never become diabetic. I want to make sure that I'm staying metabolically healthy. And of course, in the States, you can get things like constant glucose monitors, which really give you information in real time about how you're doing with your metabolic health. You know, if I eat this banana, for me, it might send my blood sugars up through the roof. And for you, it might do nothing. And then we know, uh aha, Greg can eat bananas. Lisa probably shouldn't. That's powerful information right there to slow this aging, you know, because a lot of things that come from the metabolic dysregulation. And if if we dive now into your book, because I I found your book, I mean, I'm I'm an avid reader of longevity uh, research and biotech stuff and longevity. I found the book absolutely brilliant. I don't know why it's not a New York Times number one bestseller. It, 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 It brings everything that I've learned in the last years and more into a very simple structure that was just so easy to understand. So I really want people to go out and get the book and we'll we'll put the links and everything, harnessing the nine hallmarks of aging. So the scientists have identified nine hallmarks of aging. Greg, can you tell us a little bit about that book? And let's talk about some of those nine, probably won't have time for all nine, but um, some of those hallmarks. Yeah, absolutely, Lisa. So the, the, the book comes from a paper called Hallmarks, The Hallmarks of Aging. And I, I read this paper, uh, I guess, a, a year or two ago. And it was just, uh, it, it just really excited me because within it was uh, a lot of information that um, really could help us age so much better just with that knowledge. So the purpose of the book was to make it accessible for the rest of us, right? So it was really just going in and starting to explain exactly what's happening at our cellular level. Um to uh, around aging at, at, with our cells and, and a hallmark is actually a driver of something so there are hallmarks of cancer and there's hallmarks of alzheimer's 
And they're essentially consensus by scientists as to what's actually happening at a cellular level. And when I read it, it's exciting just for the fact I found nine hallmarks, but also as a pharmacist, it was like, okay, well, these are nine targets that we can address to see if we can slow aging down. And so that's um, that paper came out nine years ago, and they've made incredible progress since then. And, you know, just like we discovered that um, germs caused infections, and that shifted behavior from a, like hygiene and, and so on. And then very quickly, because we knew what the enemy was, we discovered antibiotics. Um, this is what this paper essentially is allowing us to do. So there are uh, nine of them. Um, if you want to sort of break it down, it's yep. um, there are, it's about information. So this is our DNA. And it turns out our DNA is actually the primary driver of aging. Um, and you just need to look at the back of your hand versus perhaps the inside of your wrist. And you'll see same body, same organism, same organ, skin, but it looks different. And why is that? And that is UV damage, right? And the UV mm -hmm. damage is affecting our DNA. And um, our DNA breaks 100,000 times a day per cell, which is crazy. Per cell. Per cell. But you don't need to worry about it because we've got this incredible inbuilt mechanisms, which, which monitor it and stitch it back together and fix it. But, you know, over a lifetime, if you just continually kind of scratch away at something, it, it, it just de it degrades, right? So um, what they're saying is that, um, you know, there's actually the information theory of aging is, is kind mm -hmm. of the most current uh, uh, theory. And that is essentially it's a wee bit like a compact disc, right? It gets a wee bit scratched and the fidelity of the music is not so good. So the same thing happens. It gets a wee bit trickier for our cells to actually make the proteins it needs and then or it might get a wee bit confused and become slightly skin cell if it's a liver cell and so on so so actually fundamentally your dna is 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 what's driving it and there are three parts of your dna one is something called your telomeres which you'll know all about it's the mm -hmm. cat chromosomes so they shorten over time um, epigenetic modifications that's actually the methyl groups that we were talking about earlier and these Methyl groups are what turn off and on genes, but also measure our progress through time. And then um, lastly, it's just it's just gene instability. So that's the, where we have those errors that pop up when, when a breakage happens and perhaps things aren't stitched together quite so well. And there's beautiful redundancy in all of this, and it works so well. And obviously, you know, we're talking about self-repairing machines that keep us going for as long as 120 years and, and you know, best case. So... So, you know, we put sunscreen on our face because it's an aesthetic way, a way of aesthetically slowing aging. Mm -hmm. So now we've got to look at it and go, okay, how do we do that for our cells? Yeah, and, on the uh, that's, So that's the, uh, the, I guess, the breakthrough and the insight there. And, and we know that all the things that we do that are good for us, like the, the, the exercise, the diet, the mindfulness. Um, and it's incredible that even being mindful can actually be read on your DNA is and wow. have an impact, which is, you know, took me a long time to get my head around exactly how that works, but it's um it's fascinating. And then you there are supplements now that you can take, like uh NAD precursors, which are yeah, which I'm a big actually, fan of. Yeah, and they and they they uh, uh these pre NAD is an activator of enzymes and specifically proteins enzymes that are the guardian of your genome that look after your DNA, these sirtuins. The sirtuin genes, yeah. yeah. And then and the, and the, the NAD story and the repair of uh, of, of damaged DNA, like the, so. When you when you get, you've got the 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 DNA that double helix strand that we see in the you know graphics that we see, and it basically unzips and replicates itself. And there is points in that in that process where mutations can happen, and it doesn't fit back together and it, it, it's producing proteins that are not folding correctly and there's all this sort of really technical stuff and I, and I don't want to butcher it because honestly go and read the book <laughs> it's pretty hard to explain some of this stuff you get a lot of lot, loss of proteostasis so this misfolding of proteins is another area can you explain that one a little bit yeah the um, and proteins are like our little little nano machines and most people think of proteins as the the muscle right that's kind yeah. of your protein shakes because you're building your muscle but proteins are literally uh, part of every part of our cell they're the tiny little like yeah nano machines in our cells and if you go and spend a bit of time on youtube and look and and like google's the uh, animations of proteins um, in our cells and it's just mind boggling how complex and clever and amazing that this is it's I think more of a miracle that we're alive yeah. when you look at the things at this level. 
Um, and so, and, and like a protein comes from, like it reads, I guess a bit of DNA opens up and it's read by the protein, like mRNA essentially. And then it gets, trans that information gets transferred into an area that makes amino acids and a long chain of those. And those amino acids, it's quite amazing. They, I think like a standard amino acid chain for a protein can like fold something like 10 to the power of 300 times. Like it's actually... Wow. But it, somehow we manage to fold them correctly, and they make these uh, these these proteins that do the jobs in our, our bodies. Um, but yeah, if you miss an, if you miss a, 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 a amino acid or miss a bit of code, absolutely those can be um, can can cause problem and disease. And then the body's got really fascinating repair, uh, recycling processes, so it actually can identify proteins that aren't working so well and sends them off to uh, get broken down and rebuilt again. So that's, you know, the proteostasis is essentially just keeping your proteins in good working order. Um, but over time, it, it breaks down. And the best um, best example of that is, is Alzheimer's, right? These are, you get your beta amyloid and your, mm -hmm. your plaques and tangles, essentially. Um, and this, these are proteins that are folded incorrectly. Unfortunately, they also are slightly contagious. So one protein that's folded incorrectly can affect other um, proteins. So you start a cascade. Um, but uh, and that you know those, those that amyloidosis can happen anywhere in the body, but that um, Alzheimer's is pretty much the most common one. And we can do stuff now too. I mean, um, I had Dr. Dan Goodnow on the show recently, who's written the book Breaking Alzheimer's and um, looking at you know ways. Of, and I and I've seen firsthand how the brain can regenerate, and we can undo some of this damage that's happened, and we can certainly be preventative with our strategies. Um, and, and, and there's some fascinating research around that. But there's a process called autophagy and there's a process called uh, or, or things called senescent cells that I wanted to sort of dive into. And people who listen to my show probably heard me talk about these two terms before. But can you define autophagy for people um, and how do we achieve autophagy and what some ways to get rid of these senescent cells and what they are? Yeah, so autophagy is a, is a I guess, a, a, two words, auto and phagy, and, and auto is self and phagy is eat. So essentially, um, it's a way uh, to, um, I guess, uh, to clear the cells out, eat, eat the cells that are not working so well. And uh, we have these um, cells called senescent cells, and senescent cells are often called zombie cells, um, but they're cells in our bodies that have stopped replicating. And that could be that they've reached the end of their replicative life, um, each cell can on average, I think it's around 50 times that it can divide mm -hmm. and then it stops. And, uh, and but the other reason is that um, the body might put the handbrake on a particular cell because it's finished its job. So if you've got a scar or you've got a cut and you don't want to be con continuing to build scar tissue. Mm -hmm. So the body goes that we've done our job, put the handbrake on. Um, or it could be that the cells recognizing something's going wrong, like cancer, for example. So the body's just got such great mechanisms to sort of halt some of these issues. So when you a, a senescent cell has or a cell has become senescent, it does a couple of things. It changes its shape, um, but it also starts to pump out inflammatory molecules. And it's doing that because it's actually waving over to the immune system and saying, "Oh, over here, I've done my job. It's time for you to remove me and replace me and recycle me." And 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 that works beautifully when we're young, but as we get older, then we, we find that uh, the immune system is getting a little sluggish. Meanwhile, a whole lot of senescent cells are popping up at the same time and, uh, and, and it increases the inflammatory burden that we experience as we age. And the more inflammation we've got, the more that um, we get disease and, and so on. And, and senescent cells are, are, are tricky critters because you can have a senescent cell in one part of your body and it can actually turn the cells in other parts of your body senescent. So it's it's almost like you've, you've got to nip them in the bud and clear them out. So what you can do to improve or reduce the amount of senescent cells in your body, you can get out there and do a decent bit of exercise. Um, fasting is really interesting. So if you think back to when food wasn't perhaps quite as available, and that might have been perhaps when the Ice Age and things were a little tough, um, mammals um, obviously had to survive to get to the next piece of food. And so what happened essentially is once the body senses that it's not getting any food, it flips into survival mode and it's very clever. It goes and clips or culls the cells that aren't working quite as well and gets energy from them. 
So in the process, it's actually getting rid of those, those cells. And, the, and, and it keeps you alive for a little bit longer. And hopefully you find that food. And when you do, then all of a sudden the body just blooms with the, like stem cells and refreshes the cells. So, um, so there are some very smart people. And Volta Longo has, mm. has worked out that you can do something called the fasting mimicking diet. Mm -hmm. It's a five-day fast where you just have 600 calories a day. So really low calories. Really low. Yep. But it, it tricks the body into survival mode and clears out those senescent cells. And so we, um, and, and that just reduces inflammation. You feel quite particularly good after it. Um, and then there are also drugs and supplements now that you can take that um, are almost like a chem form of chemotherapy where it identifies those senescent cells and, 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 and just helps them self-destruct, if you will. I'm a big fan of fisetin, which is something mm. you can get um, easily. I've put it into our formula um, and it's it essentially there are like um, the, the senescent cells essentially um, basically go out of self-destruct mode. And so Fisetin actually goes along and activates or deactivates three of those self um, uh, activates three of those self-destruct mode um, pathways wow. and helps clear the body. So um, yeah, and that really comes from strawberries, doesn't it? Um, or yeah. that's one of the thing, places you can get it, <clears throat> Pisotin, but you can get it in the supplement form. And this is where, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the supplements that are coming out and that you have in your range, which we've got now, by the way, people listening to this, if anyone wants to check it out, go, go and have a look in our shop, SRW Science Research Wellness. Um, we've got products that can actually help with the senescent cell load can help clear out these damaged cells as well as do lots of other things. You know, we can talk about that as well, but I think this, this autophagy piece and the senescent cell piece is something that's so critical for people to understand and wrap their heads around. So if this is the first time you've heard it, you probably just didn't understand everything that Greg said, but go and research senescent cells and autophagy, get your head around this whole process because if we can get rid of, you, you, you know, you when you're working with a lot of older people like I am, and a lot of them have got massive amounts of inflammation and they think it's just part of getting old. Well, it is part of getting old. It's senescent cells, but we can do something about that. It's not, there's not an inevitability. When I listen to one of my uh, good teachers, Dr. Yurth, who is an orthopedic surgeon, and she talks about osteoarthritis being an inflammatory disease process it's not a mechanical uh i've torn my ligament and therefore my knees buggered and and i've got arthritis in my knee that's the initial trigger for this these senescent cells but it's built over time and these degenerative processes so she says you know doing joint replacements isn't the answer that's maybe at the very last stage when we have absolutely not you know but if we back the truck up and go hey you've just torn your meniscus we know statistically that x percent are going to have uh, uh, arthritis after such an event what can we do to start stop that process and this is where bringing in the right supplements that can get rid of these senescent cells, doing some fasting, rebuilding through exercise, getting rid of that um, senescent cell load can actually lower that whole inflammatory response in the body. Or if, for example, we've just been through COVID. God, that was fun, people. Don't do it. Um, I know now that I have probably a lot more senescent cells, vascular damage, things, you know, post-COVID, post-infection, so I am doing a very um, strong detox sort of protocol and rebuilding then the nutrients to put back into my body, a lot of antioxidants. I'm going easy on the exercise at the moment because I've got a body that's uh, run down, if you like, and I don't, you know, with the inflammation that's in my body, I can't just go and smash out a marathon today, would be stupid. I could end up with heart damage or some other horrible thing. So it's understanding that nuance of when to do what. And if you've just had a viral infection, then you may be wanting to do a clear out of these senescent cells, for example, because there's probably a lot more floating around me right now, aging me than if I hadn't had COVID. Um, and it's you know more complicated than that. But yeah, yeah. really interesting too, Lisa, is the um, research around anti-senescence which are or, or, no, molecules that get rid of senescent cells 
um, and researchers were looking at uh, like we're trying to understand why older adults are having more of a tough time with COVID. And so they thought there's a the, the theory is essentially that perhaps with, they've got an increasing burden of senescent cells and that actually triggers more inflammation and a bigger response to COVID. So in the mouse model, what they did, they got very clever. They've got human mice. I don't quite know how all that works in terms <laughs> of human immune, mice with the human, human immune systems, but they gave these older mice um, COVID um, and, they, uh, and half of their mice um, a senescent product before they got COVID. And it was really interesting because the older mice that had, had to cleared out the senescent cells, <clears throat> excuse me, um, responded the same way as young mice. Wow, it was a huge clue, and so the uh, Mayo Clinic is doing trials now on whether we can get rid of that senescent burden and whether it helps older adults actually deal and interact with the COVID virus. So we'll wow. know soon. Yeah, and, and for example, um, there's a there's a drug that you know is pre prescription drug, but uh, rapamycin um, is sort of a favourite in the anti aging space. Um, and I have mum on it, um, and this helps clear out that senescent cell burden. Um, you can take it, the, the rapamycin came, I think it was in the 60s from the Easter Island, where they discovered this molecule that actually could help with the senescent cell load, but it actually, they used it for an immunosuppressant um, to stop people who had, for example, organ transplants from rejecting the organ. So they suppress the immune system by giving them higher doses of rapamycin. But what we find is that if you have low doses, so mum has typically a, a weekly dose of rapamycin just to help clear out those cells without suppressing the immune system response. Because it's always about this. In everything biology, from what I've studied, it's, it's everything cyclic. And everything's about the Goldilocks zone. You don't want too much or something. You don't want too little. And same with hormones, same with, with everything. You, you want it in the right place at the right time. And this is why it's complicated, right? You know, because you go, okay, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, someone w wants testosterone therapy, for example. A, a, a guy wants to build muscle and, you know, I'm just going to take testosterone and I'm just going to take more because more will be better, right? More be more muscle, but they don't understand the negative side of those, that whole thing or a young lady who's on the birth control pill and what that's doing to all the other systems in the body, you know? So there's always consequences beyond the intended. And we always need to be looking at cycling things and being in that Goldilocks zone. Um, and this is where the nuance of, in, in working with the, you know, people who know what they're doing is is very important but it's not always a little is good therefore more must be better which was definitely my mentality back in the day right <clears throat> a little bit of running is good so go and run huge distances and that'll be better not mm -hmm. um from a health perspective um and, and 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 just but understanding that biology is very much uh uh very complex and very interactive and it needs to be cycled. So I like to cycle my supplements, even the great ones, you know, like NAD or uh, quercetin or fisetin. I typically do them in cycles of on and off. And why am I doing that? I'm trying to build and then clear out. So again, looking at that, so, you know, AMP kinase pathway and the mTOR pathway, which are two pathways that the body can sort of switch between. One's in the sort of growth, repair, build muscle, build here, build, and the other is clear out the garbage. Uh, and you don't want to have the growth turned on all the time. So for example, uh, bodybuilders want to have mTOR going all the time, full bore, but that's actually shortening their lifespan. Okay, so they may have great, huge muscles but a lot of their blood markers and things are showing can show if they don't understand this that having that turned on all the time that mTOR that growth can actually shorten your lifespan um, can you explain a little bit more about mTOR and AMP kinase yeah absolutely Lisa so mTOR is almost like the master switch in terms of how in terms of aging right so and it's if you uh, activate it, exactly what you see, it goes into tissue building mode. And so we build muscle, we accumulate tissue, um, but it's not good for us to stay in that mode all the time. Same, exactly what you said. So you, um, if we fast a little bit, then we inhibit it. And it's uh, 
one thing to also recognize is that like uh, you know it's it's good to have like you know two or three meals a day but definitely don't snack between meals because even just having you know, three meals a day gives your mTOR a, a time to turn turn off and that is just uh, shown to be so good for you yeah um calorie restriction is so far the only uh, intervention that we can make that actually guarantees us to extend our health span and uh, and it turns out mTOR is like a calorie restriction mimetic, right? It copies it. It makes the body think that it's in calorie restriction mode. And when so when mTOR is turned off, it triggers those autophagy signals and a whole bunch of, uh, I guess, uh, biochemical pathways and cascades, which uh, um, help the body uh, spend more time longer, uh, more, spend, help the body uh, clear out yeah, and, and live longer, essentially. Um, so and and AMPK is actually just a sensor for how much energy we've got going on in our cells right now, and it it feeds back up into um, into mTOR. And so activating AMPK, um, which is is what happens when we have less ATP in our cells, the energy, um, yeah, it, it it pretty much does a very similar part pathway to uh, what we're talking about with the mTOR. Um, rapamycin is a inhibitor and. In every single organism that it's been tested in, it, it slows aging or extends life. Mm. So we're talking in hookworms, mice, rats, dogs, primates, and there are a lot of humans that are doing it right. I'm um, taking it right now, just like your mum, um, yeah. for exactly that reason. And so the research will come out in the not too distant future. And it'll be really just what they're working out now is the protocols. Do we take yeah. it for a short That's amount of time in the middle of our life? Do we take it towards the end of our life? What's the best? And what's going to help us extend our life the most? But it is an extremely exciting molecule, and uh, will, will be the first one off off the uh, first cap off the rank, I think, in terms of uh, life extension. And then what's exciting is you start to then add in those senolytics we're talking about, and giving those a boost and cycling them. Um, in my in mice models uh, with the senolytics, you see a ten percent life extension. Wow. So these incrementally are going to essentially mean that we stay a lot healthier for a lot longer. And it fundamentally at the top level, why this is so interesting is that all these diseases we experience with old age, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, cancer, the researchers are starting to think these are actually syndrome. This is a syndrome of aging. So, and, and you know, we've spent hundreds of billions of dollars trying to fix them. We've made progress, but it's not there. We haven't cured it. So actually let's get in front of it. Let's actually keep our cells as young as possible for as long as possible and just push those diseases out 10, 20, 30 years. And that's fundamentally what we're, we, we, you know, where the research is going. Yeah, and this is just super exciting because, you know, that's exactly what we want to do. Now, some of the molecules and some of the products that you've got in your SRW range, and you, you, you have the privilege of working with some of the world's top scientists in the development of your products. And these are formulations that are dealing with various aspects of what people could be dealing with whether it's uh, immunity or muscle tone you've got a new one come out come out i see um or if it's uh, senescent cells or you know nad um precursors combined with other things how do you what, like what, what fascinates me with your company is that you've gone to the scientists who have been studying in this particular area for decades often and they have the clinical research and then taking all that research, their backing and developing products that have actually got the best combination and formulations of, of, of these molecules, the best that we have right now. And that will, you know, change and grow over time. Um, how's that process been? Because I know like, you know, you've done a number of different companies, as you said, in your life and um, always been an entrepreneur. How has that, that, that process of working with these amazing scientists been for you in the development of some of these products? I think these, these uh, scientists are very, you know, mission driven people. Like they just, you know, they're doing their work because they want to advance and help people and, and advance, advance the science, but also ultimately what they're doing is to have an impact on, on people and, and on health. So it's been a, a privilege to work with with these guys and girls out there in, in the in the research world, and what we've we, we've come up with essentially is a is a is a 
the program of three products which address the hallmarks as they hit, if you will. So, you know, we put sunscreen on our faces from the age dot because we're looking after our DNA. So the first product we have is really about how do we care and nurture and support the, the normal functions associated with looking after our DNA inside our cells. And, and that's something you might take from your 20s, for example. And then the, the next thing to kind of fall over is the, these mitochondria, right? These batteries in our cells. And so, um, but you don't need to take anything for them because they're, they're pretty good until your 30s and 40s. And then they decline about 10% a decade thereafter. So it's mm. a, so what we want to do there is go, okay, um, let's, how do we support the cell with these mitochondria and boost the energy? And energy is really important because in our cells use it to do their main thing. So it's thinking or it's heart beating or it's um, you know, processing junk, if you will, through livers and kidneys. Um, but when you get to a point where you're perhaps in your 50s, if, if you consider your body's like a V8 engine, you might have lost two cylinders. And so the car's actually not performing as well, but it's also you know, our cells have to make a decision. Do I take the rubbish out? Do I fix a couple of proteins what you know because everything is energetically expensive and it's got to it sort of makes a decision to say well i've got to sort of divert most of my energy towards heart beating and so it compromises our cells because the junk you know fills up in the in the in the kitchen so to speak it starts yeah. to get smelly and what have you or the, the 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 housekeeping hasn't been done so we need that energy and uh and so that's really what the second product is about is is supporting energy. And we do that by a really remarkable molecule called astaxanthin. Yep. You'll be familiar with it. It's a an antioxidant that comes from algae. Algae are exposed, it's, it's their sunscreen essentially. Like they wow. and it, it prevents the UV damage of, of the, the membrane inside the algae. It's a really interesting molecule because it actually fits perfectly inside our membranes and it's an antioxidant. So it just helps keep those membranes working really well. And it, so it looks after your cell membrane, your nuclear membrane, and then most importantly, the mitochondrial membrane. Oh, wow. And it looks after it. And, and that, might, that membrane is just so metabolically important to us. Um, and then we mix a little of uh, the NAD precursor. Um, NAD is kind of like fuel for your mitochondria. Um, NAD is involved in 300 different processes in your cell. But um, one of the key roles it has is in the mitochondria is it, to help generate energy. So we're sort of looking after the membrane and putting good good um, substrate for the energy generation. And then we, um, we've also got a, a molecule on there called terastilbene, which is closely related to resveratrol. And that's um, that kind of activates your sirtuin genes and, and with plenty of NAD in the mix, that also very much looks after your mitochondria, but also your core DNA. And then lastly, it's about um, that housekeeping, right? This is the the sort of the final um, thing to fail in our bodies. And, and so that really doesn't hit until our 50s. And so you take the third product to support um, uh, the inhibition of mTOR. So that's about helping your cells last a little bit longer and stimulating autophagy. Um, we've got a really interesting molecule which comes from olive oil in the mix. Mm, and that's really pain, helpful yeah. for... Um, really helpful for that proteostasis, like looking after that, those proteins and when they're not working, helping them to recycle there. So, um, so that's, so, you know, that's actually covers the nine hallmarks, but it's not just about pills. You can't um, supplement out a bad lifestyle and a bad mm. diet. So number one is like, like, let's get things working properly from a lifestyle and diet perspective. And then we add these things in to, to enhance them. Yeah, and, and and you know, like I had an argument with someone the other day. They said, a "Very fit gentleman. He's you know in his late sixties, still kite surfing, crazy. But we don't need supplements." And I was like, "Yeah, that's a big blanket statement." <laughs> um, and I think there's a bit more nuance to that conversation. Our food supplies are not what our grandparents had. We, if we had the you know perfect organic uh, food supplies and um, everything was how it should be without the chemicals and we're also swimming in a super chemicals every single day from mm. the table that i'm sitting at here to the wallpapers to the to the exhaust fumes to the mm. you know products we use every day um and therefore we need to support the body more with the the detox and the ability to get rid of you know xenoestrogens and endocrine disruptors that are in our daily environment you, you agree with that 100 percent. And, and i think you know um your uh, friend's 
um, theory is is kind of made made sense, but it doesn't make sense now because we we know that there are uh, elements of ourselves that degrade over time, and we know how to um, I guess um, reverse some of that decline. So. The, you know, coming back to NAD, we know that that molecule declines in our bodies from our 40s and drops off precipitously. Um, but if we top it back up, it has quite significant health benefits for our cells and overall overall body. So it's like, you know, we've got new knowledge now and we need to look at how we integrate that new knowledge into what we're doing. And, and you know, just like the cars back in the 30s. You know, they 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 broke down. They had wooden pistons. That you know we've 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 figured stuff out, and we're getting better at it. And so this is where this new technology comes in. And and one of my favorite molecules on the planet right now is something called hobamine. And yes, yeah. So hobamine, you introduced me to that, and I've never yeah. come across it before. Yeah, it's uh. So we um we have oxidative stress in our cells, and that's pretty much if you think about how we get oxidative stress, it's like in coming back to the car again. You put gas and oxygen and it gets burned in the car, provides energy. Out the back goes the exhaust. Um, and we some cars have catalytic converters which scrub the exhaust to make it a wee bit cleaner before it goes out. So if we go to the little engine in our, our cells, our mitochondria, it burns sugar from the food we eat and air from the air we breathe and creates ATP energy. But the exhaust is the free radicals. And, and we our mitochondria just literally... They're responsible for 95% of the free radical generation in our cells. So they're literally lined with antioxidants. Um, but as we age, those they decline and our mitochondria affects how they work, but also they spill free radicals out into our cells and it creates oxidative stress. Um, but and, and so up until recently, it's just been antioxidants which have solved that problem. Um, mm. And, you know, to some extent, but actually it's well, something to know and not many, many people will know this is that free radicals are good for us as well. Yes, this Just is the Goldilocks zone we're talking about, right? Yeah. So, you know, the body uses free radicals to communicate it's around annoying. cells and around the up And also it shoots free radicals at, at, at pathogens. If our immune system does that as the first line of defense. So actually too many antioxidants is not so good for us, right? So uh, hobamine is the first time that we can actually start to look at how do we protect the body from the downstream effects of oxidative stress. So if you imagine a, a, a reactive molecule, it's um, a free radical, um, it, what it wants to do is it wants to get stable. So it grabs a molecule from another molecule and it becomes happy and stable. But in the process, it damages other molecules. Yeah. And it happens that it's a bit of protein, oh, sorry, a bit of a lipid in your membrane. Um, actually, that lipid becomes radicalized. So it, it becomes reactive and then it goes and it's, it reacts really quickly with your DNA and your proteins and it causes a problem. So hobamine is a circuit breaker. That means that we can protect the body from the downstream effect of oxidative stress without interfering wow. with the healthy free radical signaling. So it's a breakthrough and there's just so much research coming through now that it's a, a molecule of significant effect and um, for, for health. And, and so it, it's working on that membrane level. So it's mm, breaking it there from the oxidative stress, getting out beyond that membrane. And Exactly. It's just, it's it's preventing, it, it reacts with that membrane before the membrane gets to react with anything else. Wow. And, and that bit of membrane would love to react with some DNA or some protein. And it literally forms a, a, a clump. On, yeah. So it's it's part of the reason we, so the, the other reason that we get increased inflammation as we age as well, because the immune system doesn't like these particular molecules and so it tries to get rid of them but it's 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 quite difficult so there's a lot of science in what i just said just there but yeah. basically the long the, the the sort of the the short term is that it defends our cells from oxidative stress without interfering with healthy free radical signaling which is wow which is a real breakthrough because uh, yeah I, i've been very confused in this space with antioxidants you know and the side of the scientists you know to be fair where you know i don't know was it a decade or 15 years ago or whenever where they thought oh oxidative damage is causing the damage to the you know the dna and the, you know the oxidative stress so therefore let's just throw antioxidants at things and then we'll be good to go you know and then they found hmm hang on, this isn't working, you know, mm. antioxidants are certainly important. And, you know, for example, when I've just had COVID, 
I've upped my antioxidant game, right? Because Absolutely. I'm dealing with more oxidative stress. I know that. So I need to quench that a little bit more. But for example, if I go and exercise and then I take a big bottle of vitamin C, I've actually hindered the adaptation that my body would have made through that exercise because I've just thrown a whole lot of antioxidants at that time. Now, that's not to say vitamin C is bad. It's just to say, the exercise is actually a hermetic stress. It's actually tearing down muscle, you know, and the body's going, whoop, we better actually send more troops there. And that's the signaling part. If I go and throw an antioxidant into the mix at that point of time, I've just stopped that signaling and, and stopped that adaptation. So I'm, you know, decreasing my ability to build the muscle or get more endurance or whatever the case may be. Um, so it's a time and a place for your antioxidants and, and there's a time and a place for hermetic stresses. Uh, but this one is, is different in that sense that it's not stopping that signaling from happening, but it is stopping, especially those membranes, by the sounds of it, interacting and damaging DNA and causing these clumps. That's, that, I, I didn't understand that. So that's really quite exciting. Um, and this is the only molecule that I've come across that does this. Because yeah, I've never heard of that concept before. Yeah, it's, uh, it comes from Himalayan tartary buckwheat. So it's been mm -hmm. in our diet for Me? thousands of years, uh, especially yep. in the Himalayas. Um, and it's a small molecule. So it means it gets to every cell in your body, which is really exciting. Um, but And it really comes from, again, it's like these breakthroughs, understanding what those, you know, what the oxidative process is and looking at the chain of things that are occurring and going, okay, how, now that we know what's going on here, what can we do to, to resolve it? And they tested so many molecules and, and essentially found this, this, this molecule called Haberming. Um, and it's been researched now for, uh, say, 15 years. Um, wow. We're just hearing about it because there's a lot of work to be done to make sure that it's, it's safe and it's, it's, it's okay to take. And, and that, that is the case. And there are tens of millions of dollars of research now going into it for brain health, for... Uh, cardiovascular health and also for immune health but essentially it's a uh, it's it's a, just an everybody molecule it's one of these ones that um, everybody should be taking and that's in one of your products um which is and in, in, i think that one is combined is that one combined with rutin and astralagoside yeah, yeah that's right so it's in cell one but we've also um got it as a, a single ingredient product as well so right um and um, and yeah, I just couldn't recommend people take that um, highly enough yep. and to take it from as early as possible as well, because these comp these these little um, like these clumps, if you will, they are quite hard for the body to break down and get rid of, and they accumulate as we age. So this like I like to call it sunscreen for your cells. And I know it's not sunscreen, so to speak, but it's actually uh, protective. helping protect it. It's protective, yeah. Wow, that's exciting. I've got mum on that one. <laughs> so we'll see um, how, how that, 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 that works for her. Um, Greg, where do you see the science going in the next five to 10 years? What are you most excited about? What are you working on right now? And um, the second part to that question, you know, what things are you doing at Science Research Wellness that you're really excited about? personally yeah look I, I think we, we we're looking um at 2050 and going how how do we stop that problem from a, occurring in terms of just you know being in the same model and having two billion people on the planet being pretty unhealthy and hanging around and costing a lot of money so really um, our focus is on preventative wellness like how do we help people navigate this so that they turn up in their 50s 60s and 70s and thriving and in really good health and and, and bod with bodies in a good shape so that's what our focus is on. And, and you know, we're continuing to work with um, experts around the world on how do we do that? And how do we translate that in a way which is accessible to people? You know, um, there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies working on this right now. Uh, I'd say that they'll have drugs and, and formulations out that are, um, you know, probably a decade away. Um, but we, we, when we understand what's happening at the cellular level, we can go and have a look at all the different supplements out there and go, okay, what are actually interacting with these pathways and how can we uh, formulate that in a way which can um, you know, essentially have a positive impact on, on those processes. So that's, you know, we've got uh, our cell one, two, and three out as we speak. They will evolve and change over time as we better understand exactly what's going on. And um, what I'm most excited about is, is this reprogramming that we talked about right at the start. Like if we can 
reprogram our cells and our DNA and the little methylation patterns. We can reset the clock. Um, that it's it's happening now. Like they recently, they had a lady who was 53, and they they uh, applied some factors to her skin and and got it acting like someone 30 years younger. Right? I want that. Yeah, don't we all <laughs> right? <laughs> um, in mouse models, they've managed to reprogram um, the blood, um, liver, kidney, and spleen. So, you know, these are just baby steps, um, but they are ultimately going to culminate in um, us being able to you know, reprogram. Um, and I think most excitingly is just the fact um, that we need to be doing that for our brain, right? So yeah, um, right now the tech's coming down the line that we can grow our own organs or that we can um, 3D print them, for example. But I don't. I think we're a long way about away from solving that for your brain, right? So I'm yeah. sure that we can get kidneys <laughs> sorted and hearts and what have you. But so really, we want to be looking after our brain as best we can, so that you know we, you know, so that when we turn up and this technology is there, that we've got something that's working really well, and we can patch up what we what is not working so well. So um, you know, I think brain uh, health will will definitely be a focus. Yeah, well. and and you know, as having worked with lots of people with brain injuries, and having worked on a daily basis with mum with brain injuries and neurodegeneration, and you know, strokes and aneurysm, the results of those, um, people with with uh, TBIs and concussions and stuff, protecting your brain. I mean, you can have the best looking body, but if your brain is not doing what it's meant to be doing, um, you know, you're not going to be functioning. You're not going to be enjoying life you're not going to have it's just a hell of a battle it's a hell of a battle like for me with mum and having had you know having it had a stroke plus tumors plus everything possible in her brain and and doing hyperbaric and doing supplements and doing a very strict diet and doing the exercises but I have to keep her there every single day like yesterday I was away for four hours with work um, by the time I got home, the swelling had started in her feet. The connection from her brain to her body wasn't there. So I had to spend the next couple of hours sort of working with her to reconnect her brain to her body. And I have to do that every day, you know, ongoing throughout the day. Uh, that's a hell of a load, I'll mm. tell you. That's a hell of a load that could have been prevented if we had, if I had known her risk factors, her genetics, if I had known the diet mistakes that she was doing. If I'd known a lot of those things, when, you know, in hindsight, it's brilliant. It's very nasty like that. <clears throat> but that makes me passionate to be able to stop other people having things like strokes and, and things or neurodegeneration or Alzheimer's or dementia. These are very, we, we, we can see them coming 10 years ahead. We can do things about them when they've already started. Um, and it's never too late to start. There was a, a page in your book that I uh, loved um, talking about an 83-year-old lady, Ernestine Shepard. Mm -hmm. um, she's a she was a, a bodybuilding champ at the age of 79 or something, um, and still absolutely gorgeous and amazing at 83. Um, and she didn't start till she was 56, and she was, you know, by her own admittance, was extremely fit and unfit at 56, and then started to remodel and reshape her body and, and her diet and all the rest of it um, over time. And now at 83, honestly, looks like a supermodel, just absolutely amazing and muscular and athletic. And I'm like, damn, that's where I'm, <laughs> that's what I want to look like at 83. Um, and that, that starts now. You know, but she started at 56 years old. Imagine if she'd started at 20. And mm. maybe she's got some fabulous genetics. We don't know. Um, maybe not. Um, but those daily incremental things that you do, like well, Greg can give you the best supplements, and I can give you the best diet. But if you're lying in bed or lying on the couch and doing no exercise, you are going to turn to soup. Yep. Exercise absolutely. is the basis. The exercise and diet. And mindset, the mindfulness, that's probably the one I struggle with the most, <laughs> the stress reduction. If you looked at my oxidative stress, it probably comes all from the actual psychological and physical stresses. Um, and that's something that it is, is, is epidemic as well. And that has a very powerful effect as well. So working on each of these pillars 
And for me, it's, you know, trying to get the stress levels down is probably the most important for another one. It might be getting off the couch and getting moving and someone else, it might be the diet or or whatever. But all of these things add up to an extra 20, 30, and maybe even 50, 60 years if we're lucky by the time, you know, that yeah. technology rolls around. Yeah, I mean, we are modern humans, but we're still in ancient bodies. Right? Yeah. We're just so, um, you know, we, we need to move and we need to... Um, constantly you know, you know, stress our bodies, not in a bad way, but just in terms of you know that, that hormetic Hormetic. response you're yeah. talking about. Um, and you, you go to the blue zones, which I'm sure you've talked about a bunch. And these are people in there, you know, over a hundred who are thriving. They're still working. They they walk everywhere. They move move in their life. They've um, they still enjoy a cigarette, unbelievably, <laughs> and, and, and wines. And so. Um, but you, and this is why, like, a really, you can't, you know, a really good uh, diet and exercise and lifestyle actually covers a myriad of of, of sins. Um, obviously, don't recommend smoking, but, no. <laughs> uh, but you know, and these guys perhaps enjoy a glass of wine once a night as well. So it's it's a it's just a super fascinating study on what we can do, and fundamentally, it's diet, it's exercise. The diet's plant based, Mediterranean based. Um, they and 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 so strong social groups as well. Like these, the other part. It is, I think, um, you know, a good a good partner and a good so, a set of friends can add eight years to your life. Like so, these are, fun, you know, we're social animals and and um, and also looking at how you attack life. Right, attacking it positively actually has a really positive impact. So it's about like, okay, how do we adopt our mindset so that we're really positively attacking aging? So. Do all of those things, um, and you're you're in a really good shape. Yeah, you got a good chance at living to 120, and you know, and getting there in, in good shape rather than being decrepit and declining, which none of us want. You know, that's yeah. that's you and my goal is, is I think, to <laughs> make sure that that doesn't happen to us personally or to our loved ones. You know, and, and the other keep thing, at bay. Other thing that's happening in the states, there's a company called Fountain Life. Are you familiar with what they're doing? I a little bit, little bit. Yeah, so they um, they actually upload you essentially in terms of doing a full scan and get about 150 gigabytes of data. Like it's just crazy. Um, but what they do is they pick up um, uh, around 14% of people have some sort of actionable um, health issue that might be going to be coming to bite them in the backside in the next five to 10 years. And so yeah. that might be 2% of people have an aneurysm or 2% have a, a cancer of some description. And so that just enables you to just get so far in front of it. You know, imagine dealing with cancer at stage zero. Oh, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so not a problem there. So, so do all of the good stuff, but don't put your head in the stand, sand, go and get your tests, go and get checked. Um, and what Fountain Life are doing right now is not particularly accessible. It's about a hundred thousand dollars a year, but they're saying that it'll be 10,000 a year in five years and a thousand dollars a year in 10. So, you know, that's going to mean that we'll all be able to roll in and do that that checkup and correct issues before they become a problem. And um, that's it's going to be just revolutionary for us all because it's just right now, you feel like you're in a wee bit of a lottery at times. Right? Yeah. Some people do make it, some people don't. And um, and that that lottery is going to shift to just just good management. And then and we'll, we'll all get the opportunity to have like long, healthy, uh, thriving lives. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's only for the rich, you know, and, and it is. And, and a lot of these things uh, start off being very expensive, even like the supplements that we 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 get, um, they cost. But over time, as the research is being paid for and it becomes a per unit cost cheaper, that's going to make it accessible. It always starts. If you think about the original cell phones, 20, 30 whatever years ago it was now when we first had the, those big bricks you know it was only millionaires that, that could have them uh, now of course you know every kid in, in the all, all around the world has got a cell phone um and it's it's, it's become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and more accessible and more accessible and it is unfortunately the way the world works and it is what what needs to happen is the research and the research is very expensive um, but it does then eventually get cheaper and get more accessible yeah absolutely I think that's um, something I learned um, you know 
probably 20 years ago in terms of, um, you know, the things start out being expensive. Um, um, but yeah, it seems like a long time to wait, but 20 years is not that long. And all of a sudden it becomes really accessible and, and, and for all of us. So it's a, sometimes a bit of a, a wait and see, but this is the reason that we want to actually proactively use all the knowledge we can to stay well right now. So that when we um, when these technologies come along, that um, we're ready and we can afford them, and our bodies are in good shape. Absolutely, that's a good place to end it, Greg. You've been absolutely fabulous today. I want to thank you. I'd love to have you on again, and we can do a deeper dive into some of the other nine hallmarks of aging because there's a lot to discuss. Um, where can people find you and reach out to you or your team at SW? I mean, we've got your products now in in my shop on lisatamady.com. If you want to head over there. Um, but you know, highly recommend people go and get the harnessing the nine hallmarks of aging. So we'll put that link in there. But where else can they reach out to you? Yeah, so I'm on Twitter at, at Greg McPherson. Um, and uh, find me on LinkedIn, just uh, dial up Greg McPherson and SRW, you'll you'll dig me up. Um, and but yeah, harnessing the nine hallmarks of aging.com and www.srw.co and it's is for science r for research and w for wellness and just Great. yeah thank you for the conversation and just wish everybody a uh, just a long healthy thriving life because that's what we're all about absolutely and i'm working on an anti-aging conference for next year and i'm trying to convince greg to turn up and lecture on there so <laughs> I'm there, Lisa. We're absolutely there. I'm just publicly out. Did you see I have to come now? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Greg. Thank you very much, Lisa. Bye for now.